All right, let's go ahead and look at the Profinet connection between a PLC Next and a Doosan robot. So here we have an HMI that I built uh, that's currently running on the PLC. If I go into my Doosan platform and I turn my servos on, we will notice that we now have a servo on box in the robot info. And if I was to jog the axis around, you'll notice that we get fairly live values of that job. Now, if we go to the Doosan Robotics website and then we go to the Robot Lab, uh, you'll find a Resources tab under Technical Data. You will find this Profinet information. Uh, we're going to be using the GSDML file M2.4 as well as the PNIO table version 1.1. Um, the PNIO table gives you a breakdown of all the bytes that are coming in from the robot. Uh, what you'll see is I've already created the function blocks to do that for you. So all you have to do is attach values and all of these uh, will already be broken down for you. All right, let's go ahead and add the GSDML file. So if we go file, import, GSDML files, uh, PC, downloads, GSDML M2.4, we'll end up with this GSDML file. And if we import it, what you'll find is under network, local, devices, you'll find our Doosan robot, and then all of the things that need to go with it. So what you'll have to do is you'll have to add the Doosan robot to the Profinet. And then what I found is you have to add all 10 modules in order for it to work. So we'll do that now. All right, now that we have all 10 modules assigned, we'll have to start setting up the connection. So in the main Doosan robot, we'll have to give it an IP address. In this case, I want to give it 80. In the interface settings, we'll have to change the update time from 8 milliseconds to 32 milliseconds. And then we'll just have to change one other settings. This MAU type, we have to change to no. All right, now that we've added the device to the Profinet, we're going to go ahead and see if we can find it. So if we open up the Profinet connection, go to online devices we select an ethernet port and then we go ahead and scan. We're actually gonna scan the network for uh, Profinet available devices. Now what we'll see is we found a Doosan robot and we found ourselves. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this Doosan robot one and we're gonna attach it to this Doosan robot. Now since I've already played with this before, it's gonna give me a couple of errors, but that's okay. So we're just gonna hit yes. We're going to transfer the settings from my project to the robot. And we'll see that done by the hourglass. And then now we're going to see a triangle warning. Now, I haven't found a way to get rid of the triangle warning, but this connection does work. All right. Now that we have our robot connected to our controller, let's go ahead and add the library that I designed that has some of these features. So we'll go ahead to the PLC next. We're going to go to libraries. Then we're going to go to add user library. Now in my case, it's back on my PC, Windows C, users, public users, public documents, PLC next, and then libraries. And it's under Doosan Profinet 2. Now I can release this library or I can make it available if people are interested in it. So now that we've added this library, we'll come up here to programming and what we'll see is that we've added a whole bunch of Doosan function blocks that I designed. All right, so what we'll see is we have some blocks. Now for us, the easiest one to take a look at is probably joint. So we'll go ahead and add the joint block. Now if you'll notice, I named this as DR module two. So that's going to line up with the joint state. So what we're going to do is we are going to say DR module 2. And we're going to create an external variable. Now that we've done that, we can attach it 
to the joint state. So we go to the module two, we go to data list, and then if you'll notice, there's a big long octet string here. Um, if we attach the variable here, we'll start getting the information when the module is connected. Let's go ahead and write and start this project and see what happens. So we're going to log on to the device. Then we're going to write and start the project. And since it's a fairly small project, this should load fairly quickly. And then we're just going to go to our Profinet. Now, what we should see is that this block has a bunch of arrays in it, but mainly we'll look at the position. So what we're going to do is we're going to add to the watches. We'll just add all six positions to the watch window, and then we'll go to the watch window and let's see what we've got. So if you'll notice, we are now getting values from the robot. So if we go back here to our robot, we'll turn the servos back on. And then we can go ahead and jog the robot. So we can add some spin to that one. And now we have live updated values from the robot. All right, so I've loaded my big project with a lot of the function blocks already populated, just so I can show you a few things. Um, so if we're in here, we'll see that we have some gets and some real sends. And what's that? that's gonna do is line up with some of these other ones. Um, so instead of just getting, say, task position, task orientation, you have user bits. So in bit form, you get 64 bits. Uh, you also get 24 integers in and out, and you also get 24 floats in and out. Um, now to prove that, what I've done is I've written a little program in here that just says uh, the joint degree equals the send array for the real numbers. Um, so what's going to happen is I have control over the robot with this Dart Studio from the Doosan robot. And if I actually turn the servos on and we put it into auto mode and we hit play, what you'll find is values will populate into these different positions. So you'll say get input register float and in the zero of position of the array, that's where we're gonna put the X value. And you'll see these values down here. 